unless you're a survivor of emotional abuse, you have no idea the torment that you go through having conversations with people that you're no longer in contact with. Hello, my name's Elizabeth Goddard from Revive Your Soul. So today's question is, why can't I stop thinking about them? And I think I touched on it in the last video I did, was why, why is it so hard to get over these relationships? The, there's chemical, we're all a bunch of chemicals, basically. And if you think about um, the reactions when you walk into a room, you might be feeling really, really happy and everyone in the room's really sad and they can drain your energy. And the same, vice versa, you can go in feeling really low and people are, it's a really vibrant room. You know, if you've been to um, any conferences where they're really hyping things up and it gets your energy going and how quickly you can change um, inside and you can um, feel really powerful, you can literally just change the chemicals. And, and this is what's happened in these relationships. The chemical reactions that are happening within our body are trapping us and they're causing trauma within our bodies. The oxytocin that's released, which is the, um, the bonding hormone, and I've really discussed it in the last video I did, so I will put a link to that if you haven't already seen that. It's about this bonding, how, how we bond as children to our parents, how we bond in relationships, in team building exercises, in... Um, Events that happen, you know, I've, I've, I've used um, Sully, which is the, where the, the plane lands on the Hudson River, and um, and they all bond together through this experience of, of losing all their engines, and this pilot manages to get the plane landed on the river. This is about this bonding experience and, and knowing that they were facing danger together and then having the pilot and all the crew members making sure everybody's off safely and standing, they're all standing together on this, you know, the wings of the plane on life rafts while they're waiting to be um, picked up. But I saw the film and right at the end he says, we will be bonded together um, from the events of January 15th, 2009. We will always be bonded by, by this. And this is this we, a unique experience. It, it was a game to them. They would, they, they, it was all about gaining power and control over your life. And this is why it's so hard. Your whole life was consumed by them. And it might have been early on in the relationship when you were receiving text messages or or some form of message in the morning, you know, so you, they were the first thing you thought about. This was a tactic because they know that, that, that you will be the first person that they think about because you wake up to this message. But also they know that you'll be thinking how amazing they are, somebody who's so thoughtful and caring that, that goes out of their way to make sure that you're okay or to, 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 to say that like, I'm thinking about you. I mean, this... This was possibly one text of many going out. You only have to watch uh, the series on Netflix called Dirty John just to see how manipulating... It was a project. He described it as a project. He described it... Um, he was using uh, a, a form of elimination to, to, to work through um, multiple dating women and working through to see what, what, what fits and what works and who was the best catch who had the best, you know, had the best, was able to offer him the best life. You know, the fact that Debbie had a Maserati, you know, she had a really decent apartment, she had a lot of money, um, she had her own business. These were amazing things for him uh, that, that he, he obviously didn't want to let go. And the things that were getting in the way were her children, her two, her, which had three children, but her two daughters were the ones that were actually getting in, in his way. And, um, and the lengths he went to, to destroy the relationships with her children, the lengths he went to, to um, destroy the relationship she, she had with her nephew. But in other relationships, like the one she had with her mother, she, he was, uh, um, 
she saw him in a different light. She couldn't understand what other people were saying because, and neither could um, Debbie. He's well, she married him, so the wife they married quite early on in the relationship. So, but if you get a chance to watch that, just well, it depends where you are in your recovery because it could bring up triggers. But it is an eye opener. It is. Um, it shows you what was going on in the relationship. And then it shows you what he was doing behind the scenes and how he got away and how he was doing it and how he, he was playing the puppet master, how he was manipulating from um, situations and scenarios and how he was able to control and the things he was able to do to gain control. So he arranged, so I feel like I'm doing a, a thing on Dirty John, but it's just, it was just so fascinating. And I've been talking about this for like, I don't know when I last, first saw it last year. It turned out he found somebody, uh, somebody, a drug user, and he paid her or gave her drugs to break into the, to this apartment that they were renting. This And they had this amazing apartment that she'd rented because she could just pay a year up front. And she, that she did that for him because he really fell in love with it. And he gave the excuse of not being able to afford it. It's not that he didn't have any money or that he um, had just got out of prison. Um, he gave the excuse that he was paying his ex-wife for his two daughters in maintenance and and the trust was building and you could see how he was doing it but how in the last few episodes they they cover how he did it and he paid this girl to break in and he had her arrested and he then manipulated the situation to have cameras put up all over this this apartment that they rented and then he took it one further where he was able to um, convince her to have the cameras put up in the offices where she worked so he was able to monitor her 24 7 and see where she was within the um within the home or what she was doing at work and he had her um car was being monitored and he had her phone and it was just it was just very very scary you know they they've put themselves in this place and you believe they care about you you trusted them and you handed over that trust so easily they bonded you bonded and this is why it's so hard to get them out of your head you your whole life was consumed with them and then there's nothing. They just walk away and you're empty. But they, in the process of doing that, they've been draining you of energy. They've been training you of, uh, might be finances. They've been draining you of, of, of friendships. And you ha literally have nothing left. This is one of the reasons it's this chemical bonding. Go and have a look at this other video. Um, which talks about the oxytocin. Now, research has been done um, on oxytocin with mice. They had three sets of mice. So um, set A had uh, no oxytocin at all in their bodies. Um, set B had a normal amount of oxytocin. And set three had an, a, a lot more oxytocin than it is normal. And then they put them in the same scenario uh, where they were attacked and they were taken away from that situation, put back in their case, uh, in their cages. And then they were reintroduced to this big mouse, this nasty mouse who um, was likely to attack them. And what they found was the one with no oxytocin whatsoever. They weren't frightened at all. And they showed no signs of fear. B, who had a normal amount of oxytocin, were um they did show signs of fear or wariness and um the ones with so much oxytocin or a large amount of oxytocin um were, were um suffering with anxiety beforehand now one of the uh, one of the hormones that i'm really interested in is oxytocin because i think it plays a plays a really powerful role in these relationships what it demonstrates is that when you experience trauma, that's magnified. When you experience emotional trauma, it's magnified. And then on top of that, it's imprinted. It's as if it's ingrained in your memory further and stronger than it would have been before. So oxytocin plays a huge role in, in these relationships. And we're releasing this chemical within our bodies and trusting this person that most normal people 
wouldn't have anything to do with they'd walk away once they started to see the red flags only you possibly did see the red flags and they were, or they were po possibly highlighted to you but you continued because you trusted this person you bonded with this person and this is why it's so hard to get them out of your head the fact that the first thing you woke up to every morning was a message from them and they were reinforcing that through the relationship and they were hooking you in and bonding you. And this was also done in the devaluation and the discard stages because each time you got to a discard where they maybe disappeared or they rejected you in some way, they turn back up again and they'd love bomb you and they take you back to the stage where you felt safe, where you felt valued. And this is why it's so hard because you're trapped in this cycle. It's so hard to break. It's finding ways of distracting yourself, finding ways of calming yourself down on your body because it is on hyper alert. You're probably suffering from um, complex post-traumatic stress disorder. You, um, again, I explain that in the same video, which is the one I did last week, the difference between post-traumatic and complex post-traumatic stress disorder. You've been bonded. You're now trying to find a way of um, breaking that cycle and nurturing yourself and breaking all contact um, or as much as you can, particularly if you've got children, it's gonna be very hard. And it's hard if it's a family member as well because this isn't just rom romantic relationships. This can be with a family member as well. So this is about go going gray rock, not giving any information out, um, you know, very basic information and um, nurturing yourself treat yourself you would a, I'm, I'm going to say a child because I, your inner child has been damaged on some level um, you've been violated on on very different you know so many different levels and um, you've been tricked and and you need to mourn you need to grieve it's a process of grieving and understanding and you get to a certain point and then you might, because you've believed all the stories, you've believed everything they've told you, um, you might feel sorry for them. You might feel that, um, you know, this is all your fault. But please let me tell you, nothing about this relationship is true. So why are you believing everything about you to be true? All those bad things they told you, where you weren't good enough, that abandonment, this is more about them than it is about you. Some of the things that I've experienced in relationships, I know wasn't my fault. I know it wasn't. And yet I believed it was for such a long time and it's such a painful journey and it's such a painful um, experience to keep reliving it. It's like you start to climb out of the hole and you lose your footing and you fall back down. But just remember, each time you fall back down, see how quickly, how much quicker you are at climbing back up. They mirrored you. You are amazing and they wanted to be you. And that's what they couldn't cope with because it's a mask. They're empty inside. So you come away live it feeling like a shell, but they actually live it all the time. And I'm not excusing their behavior because the behavior was vile. But what I'm saying to you is, question yourself. Get a journal out and write the story out. It's so powerful. Write the story out and start to see the patterns. And then when you're done with that, write the story out of other people that you've had in your life as well. Treat yourself as if you would a young child. Put yourself to bed if you need a nap. Sit down and put your feet up if you feel like it. Because your body is on hyper alert, it's moving around a lot. Or you've gone into crash mode. And you want to be careful with adrenal fatigue and things like that. You've really, really got to look after your body now. And your mind, particularly your mind. Do some meditations. Find some um, guided meditations online that are free. And just sit, just for a few minutes. And just allow your brain to calm down. Allow that mind to soften. Even if you get 30 seconds of it not chattering away. It's 30 seconds that you haven't had in a very long time. I'm sending you loads and loads and loads of love.